All right, um, you have a long list of questions that are called Concept Test 5.4, so I'll do a few of them now, and if the video gets too long, I'll just make another video. Um, this set of questions seems to do, deal with mixtures of gases, and there's some background information you need to know to put a frame around the question so that you know how to approach it. Um, one thing that I'm sure you learned in lecture is that when looking at gases, the pressure of a gas is the force of the collisions of those molecules um, divided by the area over which they're hitting. Um, one important aspect of this is that if you have a big heavy molecule hitting the wall, you might think, oh, well, that's going to have a lot of pressure. But the fact is, is a big heavy molecule is probably moving slower than the lighter molecule, which is moving faster. And the fact is, is that it balances out. So if I have these, um, I'm, I just made two molecules here, but 50% of the pressure in this um, picture is due to gas molecule A, and 50% of the pressure is due to gas molecule B. Even though B is a smaller molecule, lighter molecule, it's moving faster, so that makes up for uh, the, the energy in the collision. What that ends up leading to is this idea, that the pressure due to a gas, let's call it gas 1, is going to be whatever fraction of the total molecules there are. So you could say molecules of 1 over total molecules, or you could do molecules, sorry, moles of gas 1 over total moles. Now, every gas has its own contribution to the full pressure. When you add all of those contributions up, it's going to be equal to the total. Okay? So let's see what I've got here. Um, I didn't write these ahead of time, so there may be a lot of dead air here. So 5.4a talks about a one liter flask, and I'll just draw a circle, and it's got three kinds of gases in it. It's got argon gas, oxygen gas, and nitrogen gas. Um, the partial pressure of the total is 4.5 atms. The argon and the oxygen just happen to be the same. What must the nitrogen be? Well, that one's not bad. If you look back up at Dalton's Law, since the total is the sum of the three gases, if you know the total, which is 4.5, just subtract the contributions from the first two gases, and that's going to give me 2.5 atm for the nitrogen. Okay, so that's answer C on your multiple choice. For B, I have another one liter flask, so I'll just draw a circle here. And I have argon, oxygen, nitrogen. That sounds familiar. If the pressure is 4.5 atm, and the argon in the oxygen is 1.0. Oh, they're throwing you a curveball here. What's the volume occupied by oxygen? Well, this is basically a question about understanding what gases are. Gases fly around wherever they want, so the volume of all the gases is one liter. Okay? And that happens to be C, because they told you it's a one liter flask. Um, 5.4 C. Another one liter flask. I have argon, nitrogen, and oxygen. And <laughs> the total pressure is 4.5 atm. The argon and the oxygen are both 1 atm. What is the mole fraction of argon? Aha! Now there was an there was a equation on the previous slide that said that the, um, the pressure due to a gas is equal to its mole fraction times the total. Okay? And so since the pressure of this gas, which is argon, is 1.0 atm, and the total is 4.5 atm, the mole fraction is just going to be this fraction, 
1 ATM over 4.5 ATM. And I can't do that in my head. So I'm going to use my calculator to get 0 0.22. Mole fractions don't have any units, by the way. All right. So that's 5.4C. 5.4D. If more nitrogen is introduced into the same flask, so it looks like they're adding nitrogen so that its partial pressure is 4.0, what happens to the partial pressure of the oxygen? Basically nothing. Um, the reason is, is that all you're doing is adding more molecules, and the fact that there's a lot of molecules in the flask that weren't there before doesn't affect the pressure. Um, the collisions of the oxygen with the walls are going to be the same because you haven't done anything to the temperature. You haven't made it warmer or colder. You haven't shrunk the flask. So basically it does exactly the same, and I get another answer of C. By the way, I forgot to tell you, 5.4C, that was answer A. Um, oops. Another one here. 5.4E, this is going to be a long video, but it says uh, CH4 and O2 are mixed in a stoichiometric ratio. What does that mean? Well, that means they're, they're mixing a proper ratio, ratio so they react. So, in other words, if I have methane plus O2, that's a combustion. You should know that because it's a hydrocarbon. You get CO2 in water. And in order to have this guy balanced, I need to throw a 2 there and a 3 halves there. And if I have to get rid of the fraction, I don't know what they taught you at Wisconsin, but this would be a balanced version of that equation with only whole numbers. Okay? So, uh, two carbons, two carbons, eight H's, eight H's, and I've got, uh, whoops, that's not right. Um, what did I do wrong, Margaret? Oh, I didn't have to do that. <laughs> um, I could have just left this as a 2. I made a mistake. All right, so that one's all balanced. Um, so they're mixed in a stoichiometric ratio, and the flask has a total pressure of 600 millimeters of mercury. Okay. Um, What's the partial pressure of each prior to combustion? Essentially what they're telling you here is before these guys react, use the mole fraction. And basically, there's, if you could think of um, this 1 to 2 ratio, um, the mole fraction of the methane is simply going to be 0.333. The mole fraction of the oxygen is 0.667. And therefore, that's going to be the um, pressure of each times the total pressure. So a third of that, that's going to be 200 millimeters of mercury. And this is going to be 400 millimeters of mercury. Okay? Because there's twice as much ox oxygen as there is the H4. Um, Yeah, I, I don't understand what the question was. Well, uh, 5.4E, what is the partial pressure of each gas prior to combustion? Oh, that's the same as F? Looks like that to me. I don't understand. Um, but I got C again. Lots of C's on here. Um, 
5.4.h i um, they've got a 1.25 liter flask connected to a 2.5 liter flask and I've got 3.0 ATM of oxygen. Um, what happens when you open? So they have basically, they call stopcocks there. Those are those openings. So if you open them, what's the final O2 pressure? Okay. Um, basically, this is something like uh, uh, we got, we're changing the volume, essentially. You're, you, the gas is no longer confined to 2.5 liters. It gets to run around uh, the other flask as well. So um, we have uh, pressure and we have volume. So you might remember Boyle's Law. P1, V1. Whoops, my bad. Um, P1, V1 equals P2, V2. So essentially the original pressure of the gas was 3.0 ATMs. The original volume is 2.50 liters. The final pressure, I don't know. But the final volume is going to be the sum of the two flasks. So I get 3.75 liters. So the final pressure of the O2 is going to be 3 times 2.5 divided by 3.75. I got 2. 2.0 ATM. Okay. And... Uh, Question 5.4.h.ii is um, what if um, N2 is present? What's the final pressure of the oxygen? And it's basically going to be the same. Basically, if I start off with some N2 in here, that's got no effect at all on the oxygen. All the oxygen cares about is it gets to bounce around inside um, a new flask. Um, and then, uh, looks like there's one more question, and it's 5.2c, so I kind of went out of order here. 5.2c, so ASH3, um, it can decompose into its constituent elements. This looks a heck of a lot like the airbag question. And so I need to balance by putting a 3 there, a 2 there, and a 2 there. Okay? So it says that STP, basically you know that that's 0 Celsius and 1 ATM. Um, determine the volume of H2 when... 43.8 milligrams of arsine, whoops, that's the ASH3, decomposes. Okay, so I'm going to convert that to grams right away and then go forward. So 0 0.0438 grams of the chemical compound arsine, I want to convert to moles. And arsine has a molar mass of, I got 74.9 plus 3. It's going to be approximately 78. The mole ratio says that I get 3 moles of H2 for every 2 moles of the arsine. 0 0.0438 divided by 78 times 3 divided by 2. It's a small number, but it's 0 0.000842 moles of H2. Okay, now we're going to use the ideal gas law because guess what? They asked me for a volume. So PV equals NRT. The volume is NRT over P. So the moles is 0 0.000842. R is 0 0.08206. The temperature is 273K. The pressure is 1 atm. 0 0.000842 times 0.086 times 273. 
I get 0 0.0189 liters. And that is that, I think. Please give me a call if you have any questions.